Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and I thought today, you know what, let's talk about Tesla. We haven't talked about Tesla for a while on the channel, so let's do a video on it. Seems like we should do it because at the moment, uh, as recording this video, it is about 10 minutes until the market actually opens up, but the stock is currently up 7% in pre-market hours. Now the news of this actually comes on the back of uh, Tesla actually smashing deliveries. Um, so it actually came the other day that if we look at quarterly deliveries here, Tesla delivered 184,000 electric vehicles in Q1 2021, blowing away expectations. So just to give you a, an example of what actually was supposed to happen or what people were expecting is that Tesla would deliver between 160,000 to 170,000. Um, so yeah, it, absolutely crazy. And it's always hard to predict exactly where Tesla's gonna come in these deliveries because so many different things can affect what is going on between shortages of parts and conductors and everything like that. So yeah, um, for Tesla to come somewhere around that range or even above that range, should I say, absolutely amazing. Now, as an investor in Tesla, what basically this means as well is that going into Q1 earnings, deliveries always give you an idea of roughly where the company's gonna be performing. Now, obviously, revenue wise that kind of suggests that unless the other parts of the company absolutely fall off a cliff then it means that q1 should be pretty good on tesla's front as well as q1 being actually pretty good on tesla's front on the revenue side of it bearing in mind that hopefully the other little segments do quite well as well because you've you've also got a few little bits and bats the only little thing that we don't know about now is the earnings the eps side of it because obviously we don't know potentially tesla might have um, had a few extra costs that we don't know about. So EPS is always the one that we're going to not knowing exactly. But what it does say to us is that, look, when we do get around to Q1 earnings, t the the revenue should be okay, because as you can see, revenue on the uh, delivery side of it should be above estimates. So yeah, it looks pretty good from this point of view, and also it looks from the earnings point of view in Q1. And like I say, um, as recording this video, the stock is currently up 7%. It was even up a little bit more than this at the moment. So yeah, um, pretty good. So if you were one of those people that were a little bit brave and you were thinking, you know, Tesla around that $600 range, I'm sure by the time this opens up and in, is in the $700 range, you're getting a few little rewards for being a bit brave and buying in that dip. Now, if we do actually look at how impressive that was once more, once more, because if we look on this graph here, you can see these are actually the deliveries. Q1 tends to be sometimes a little bit weak for Tesla as well. And you can see 184,000. Just to put that into perspective, you can see here that that's the same Q1 in 2020, 88,000. So the growth on that is absolutely insane. So uh, big, big up to uh, Elon Musk for ramping up that production. You know, I didn't think that they would scale up production that much that quickly, um, especially when you think about, you know, you've got the Gigafactory in Austin coming in. Uh, obviously that's going to help num uh, numbers gigafactory in berlin coming in and then there is a few rumors that a uk gigafactory will come at some point but yeah you can see that okay tesla are actually scaling up quite a bit i think the f funny thing is this little dip here this little short one here is when i actually bought tesla the first time around i think that's when i bought tesla at 40 dollars um, and yeah that was just um, a shock on earnings and the stock actually dived on that um, and i think that's the first time i did buy the company but it, just from that point of view look how quickly you are scaling up and it just puts it into uh, context how well Tesla are doing now funny enough I didn't really cover this because I just felt like every single YouTube channel uh, everyone's cat everyone's dog everyone's goldfish kind of covered this and uh, by the time I got around to like doing it I think there was already like uh, 120 videos on YouTube about uh, Kathy Woods about putting a Tesla's price target at 3,000 so I was like I don't want to cover it really um, but yeah in general as well, I don't like covering too many things about Kathy Woods. I think she's a little bit overloved on the YouTube scene, if I'm honest. But um, yeah, um, just though to put this in perspective on Kathy Woods' side of it, um, she actually put a Tesla price target of 3000 And there was a few other things like if the taxi network um, set off and something. But you actually look into... Um, what she put on the price target of how many cars they were to produce. Um, and it says here, in its bare case, Ike expects Tesla to trade at 1,500 per share as it sells 5 million cars per year. And it's, uh, so that's the bare case at 1,500, which would be 100% upside, 5 million cars. So you think if Tesla can carry on doing what they're doing right now, you know, they're gonna be somewhere short of 1 million. So to ramp up um, that much, um, we would hope they would roughly be there, but on the bull case is if they get to four, 4,000 per share, as it sells upwards of 10 million cars per year. Um, so yeah, to put that 
into context, you know, you, you you actually thought, okay, that's not achievable, but look at how quick Tesla have actually managed to ramp up them sales in this quarter. Okay, you know, we've, we've over doubled in this quarter in this quarter you know if we if we double every year we're not actually going to be too far off that so yeah i think that at first when i saw that i thought oh i don't know if tesla are able to do it but you know what that q1 the from 2020 to 2021 you know if they can keep doubling up their production every year it is possible at first i was like i don't know if they can produce that many cars but you're looking at it now a little bit and it's like i think those numbers actually put it into a bit a bit of perspective like Tesla actually, if they could carry on this ramping up, it should be pretty good. And it also kind of puts into context how far Tesla are ahead of the game. Um, I was looking at actually Neo the other day and the amount of deliveries that they they did. Um, don't get me wrong, um, they're, they're ramping up just as quick as Tesla. It's really good how quick they're ramping up. But when you look at the amount of deliveries that um, Neo actually made compared to Tesla, it just shows you the kind of difference where they're actually at. But um, I still think Neo. When you look at Neo, this was this was such a popular company. Like only um, even if a, a few months ago, you know, loads of people were talking about this this ramp up here. And um, I always said, you know, if, if Neo gets to about thirty dollars, that'd be where I'm interested in buying. At the end of the day, I went and bought Tesla just because it's more of a worldwide company. You've got the charging stations there. You've got the driverless taxis there the batteries that they have there, the charging network, the solar side of it. I just think it's an all all around. Um, great company with more income streams and that's just generally why I do prefer Tesla over Neo but I still think Neo is a good company and um, I think when you look at nowadays you know it just shows you how much you know electric cars are ramping up and even Neo you know that the amount of electric cars that they're ramping up at the moment you know if I saw so many people thinking about oh shall I jump in at $40 shall I jump in $45 and um, you know we've, we've had such a drop now and I just don't really see too many people talk about Neo at the moment and I was like you know, of all the times that you've been like, we just gone up and up and up, and the, that phone was been happening, and now you have the drop. And I think even Neo brought out the other day that, that their deliveries were really strong as well. You know, this company is nearly half its value since its 52 highs, and this would be another one if I wasn't, you know, um, if if I if it wasn't for Tesla, and I just think Tesla's, you know, an amazing company and probably better, in my opinion, better than Neo. But I still think Neo is a great company. Don't get me wrong. You know, if, if I weren't a Tesla investor and Tesla hadn't dropped and I never bought it, even Neo right now, I'd be looking and thinking, with them Tesla delivery numbers, you can see how strong the EV side is, even with the, the numbers that have been coming out of uh, Neo with their January delivery um, update. You know, if I wasn't invested in this one, I'd be looking and thinking, you know, there's some great companies that are going to do very well with the EV boom over the next few years that, that have sold off absolutely huge the last few weeks. And, uh, I'd say that this is a case of another one where it's uh, very tempting if I wasn't a Tesla shareholder, I'd be massively considering this one uh, with, with this sell off. And the other one was ChargePoint. If I just go on ChargePoint stuff, you know, this this one's really going to benefit from the EV boom in the next few years. And look, half the value. Um, I was really tempted to buy this one. In the end, I didn't just because I thought, well, the Tesla supercharge network kind of covers me on this one. But even if I, you know, if I wanted some sort of EV play, you know, some of these companies that have been massively sold off on the EV side of it, the last, you know, like 54% of its value lost. I think um, definitely, you know, having some a play in the EV sector is a, is a must. As a long-term uh, a player in, in the stock market, if you don't have an EV stock, I generally think, like, when you look at the drop that we have had in the last kind of, you know, month period, if you haven't picked up shares in Tesla, if you haven't picked up shares in Neo or ChargePoint, I definitely recommend you should reconsider that and look at maybe picking up one of these stocks while it's st still sold off at the moment. So anyway, today I thought I'd just make a mini little update talking about Tesla and them delivering numbers because they were amazing and show, you know, the Cathy Woods price target is actually on at the moment. I thought I'd also mention Neo a little bit. Um, I also thought I'd mention ChargePoint and just that, you know, the, the whole EV sector is one of the hardest ones that's been hit at the moment. And when you look at the growth that they're still putting in, you know, whether it's Neo, whether you look at Tesla, you know, for me, while we're on this little sell-off on the EV side of it, if you haven't got yourself an EV play in the portfolio, I would definitely reconsider, you know, having one of them in there. And I thought I'd do a mini update as well, because I don't really talk about Tesla too much. I just think it's so well covered on YouTube that you know, there's no point me doing it. But I thought today was 
maybe one of those days where I would just, you know, touch on it for like 10 minutes or something. So I hope you enjoyed it anyway, just as, as a short video today anyway. Um, tomorrow I'm probably actually going to do a video on Palantir and just talking about that one. Um, so that one might be a little bit longer than today's, but um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it as always guys. Um, if you could smash the like button, if you're new, subscribe, uh, and I'll see you on the next video.